Hello, welcome to this video tutorial in Clipsy in Fusion 2.5 as an alternative to using flags in Fusion 2.5. Now, over the last three or four years, there's been a lot of debate as to whether to use global values, whether to use flags as detectors for on and off states. Like, for example, if you have um, an active object that can either have a state of off or a state of on. Um, there's multiple ways you could do it in Clipsy Fusion 2.5 and that's the beauty of this software. I mean, if you were doing it in programming, you could use uh, Boolean flags um, for doing this kind of thing. But in Fusion, there's multiple ways you can achieve the same desired effect. Uh, I'm going to show you another way that's not usually discussed much. Uh, and I'm quickly going to show you uh, a couple of the errors and mistakes that people do make uh, and the reason why. So let me just drop in an active object real quick right so i'm going to keep i'm going to uh, i'm not going to keep that i'm going to just paint it real fast so i'm going to give it like a let's give it a red give it a red color i'm going to create another frame here i'm going to give it a green color i'm going to turn the animation speed down to zero so it doesn't play through this animation because i'm going to force it to do it manually all right <clears throat> so there's two a few fundamental ways you can go about things like for example you can always force the animation frame to zero so that means when I run the application that it will always display the first animation frame, which is zero. Uh, and then we can add a secondary event which says check for mouse pointer over an object. And if it is, we can then change the animation frame to one. So if I run F8 again, now it remains at zero, like always, it should always be frame zero, except when the mouse pointer is over it, then we can change the animation frame to one. And it works a charm. It's real good, real simple. Um, one of the mistakes some people make uh, in Fusion is using a global value or a alterable value. <coughs> Excuse me. So if I change uh, this alterable value here for this object and we'll call it switch. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, what am I going to do? I'm going to say every time the user clicks uh, on an object and a new condition the alterable value of switch is zero, then set switch to one. Uh, I can then copy that, that down and then just say when the switch is one, set it to zero. So basically you've got an alternating switch going on here. So let's just run this application now. If I drag this object into the debugger so we can keep track of that value, watch what happens. I'm clicking on the object and you can see it's still remaining at zero. That's one of the issues a lot of people come across with Fusion 2.5 and it's kind of illogical to have the same event uh, with different conditions in the same loop because what happens is Fusion picks up that this has happened but then this has happened straight after as well um, so it sets it back to zero so you're just basically negating. Uh, this event is just negating this event uh, and it's complete it just gets rendered absolutely useless so i'm going to show you a trick what you can do um, because on the third way you can have um, flags like for example we can say the mouse user clicks uh, on an object we want that one so we could say for example um, flags toggle uh, flag zero all right so we're toggling flag zero um, and then you can do um, if switch uh, what do we do no what do we do what do we do like we go for flag because we're not using the value so we go then we go is flag zero off we do animation change animation frame to zero and the next event we will do is the flag on then we can change the animation frame to one so this will work because what happens here is when we toggle uh, a flag, when we toggle, uh, do the actual toggle, it, it will literally take um, one full loop to do the toggle, which is why um, it works. But it still doesn't work as efficient as it should. And the reason why it works, don't get me wrong, it works 99% for what people will need it for. However, you cannot name flags in Fusion 2.5, and that's just a hard-coded error that stems back way to multimedia fusion. Um, so how do we get around this? Well, there is a mathematical dysfunction called Zor that you can use. So you can use um, this 
to um, a, a global value to produce a switch effect just bear with me one second because I've got one monitor trying to turn off what's that fixed right so what do we do <laughs> turn on um, right so we've got our object here and we've got our switch here here we go this is where the monitors are gonna all get messed up now do apologize go back thank you right where were we <laughs> we've got that on the screen oh dear me right so we've got our object now uh, we've got no events as you can see so let's do the same thing but using our ZOR method all right so again we detect for the click so we do the mouse user clicks on an object all right what we're going to do is we're going to set switch to the current state of switch ZOR1 so what does that do well what that does <coughs> zor acts can act like a true or false um operator so what what will happen is it will take the current uh, number of switch so for example if switch is zero it will make it one if the current um value of switch is one it will make it zero uh, and we'll see that in effect right now so we can now do if switch is zero animation change animation frame to zero or what you can do uh, well, i'll show you this in a second so switch is zero let's do animation frame zero or you can do if switch is one and force the animation frame to one so when i run this application now you can see that when we click on this red square it's changing and you can see up here the alterable value is changing just by using the Zora method. Now, if you wanted to cut this down by even more events, you could just literally do always, and you could force animation frame to the current switch value. So you've done it in two events there, same effect. And that's the beauty of Click Team Fusion 2.5. Sorry about the midway point of video where everything started going a little bit peaked on, but yeah, that's pretty much how you do it. Um, and you can see that you can, you can name uh, your global values uh, you can which kind of acts as flags now if you will um, which is quite cool uh, to do hope you enjoyed this video uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to check out more tutorial videos and also don't forget to check out the click fusion academy website where you can see um, countless hours more video tutorials uh, and written tutorials private forums uh, live skype sessions live streams and much much more thank you very much for watching this video i'll see you in the next one